They finally arrived! My most anticipated pre-orders! Hello and welcome or welcome back to my channel and today we have the best unboxing ever because my most anticipated pre-orders finally came in and because this video will be long anyway let's get right into it to unbox the first one from Aniami Nani? or not because Amiami decided to push Otaku Mahalo back to January next year, which means I did not receive him, even though he is released in China, I think. But I will still have to wait for him, which sucks. But anyway, we still got this one package, and of course, it's also from Omnioji. And who am I talking about? I'm talking about Susuka Gozen! My one full scale figure from Anime Star. This is my most exciting and most awaited and most anticipated pre order of this year. She's also my most expensive Ooh. figure that I now currently own and I have ever bought. So let me show you her unboxing. That's the box in which she arrived. As you can see, it's a huge ass box with some protective parts on the side we have her name and fragile on the side with Omnioji, Mostom, Animaster and Medias Games and it's a beast now well, let me take you up a bit and we will open it you can see my little puppies moving in the background It's another huge box, what would you expect? And here we have her actual box with her on the side. Let me remove the plastic. Oh, that's the box without the blister or the plastic around it. It's one massive box. That's my hand for comparison. I can put it three times down here. <laughs> massive! Um, she has an outer layer which we can remove. And there's the actual figure underneath it. So anyway, we have her name here. Susuka Gozen, then I think that's her kanji name. Another name? <laughs> Maybe something she's saying. No, here's PVC and I can't read the rest. A picture of the goddess. And down here we have again Onyoji from Animeister and Morstom. When we move her to the side, we have this really nice logo here of her which is her sign, then a big warning sign on this side which is also just red and her weapon in the background that's official on the OG merch here we have the authenticity and again with her beautiful and her face uh, her beautiful sign so let's remove the outer one to the side and here she is here she is, in a plastic, her pin, that's one of the extras that you get. On top of it we have on Mioji and the bottom was pure red. Another 360. On the back we have again her beautiful sign of her um, 
her signature sign. I, I'm not exactly sure. Her token. So, and first look, she's it. We have just a little indent here, but she seems to be fine. But let's get her out and let me show you. And that's she in her blister package on the back. There seems to be the extras that are supposed to come with her. So we will cut these loose. So turns out what I thought were the extra that comes with these figures are actually her base and the fire pieces around them. So <laughs> I guess we will start with assembling because there are obviously assembling instructions. We have a base, everything is named. And when I first opened it, everything laid on this side because on this side because I'm stupid and I don't know how to open and I didn't know which side is up and which is the bottom. They could have written something there. Anyway. Yeah. So looks like a lot of pieces. I think I'm supposed to start with the base, and that's exactly what we are gonna do now. Okay, guys, here's the base. Pretty cool looking with obviously some indents where the fire expects pieces and Suzaku will come in. It has some little feet here and the Netty Ace Games logo, but nothing else is underneath it. All the fire pieces are nicely numbered on the assembly manual and pretty easy to distinguish because everything is different. It has a magnet! It's the first one which has a magnet! Amazing! Amazing! Look at this piece! Stunning! Stunning! And the gra gradient is just amazing! So this piece slides in right here and it moves super easy. So the magnet is pretty strong but overall it is kind of wobbly as you can see and here's the next flame piece again really pretty and we have two packs one magnet and one down and that goes here like so oh fits like like a glove i love it amazing And with this, the fiery base is finished. Next, we will put Suzuka on the base. I have her standing for now, but as you can see, there is a slight gap. There you can see, it's a slight gap. I hope it settles with time, but I can't push her any more or any closer into it without having to fear to break her feet off. Not quite sure if you can really see it, but we have a hole here where we will now put in her tail. So we got her tail in. I had to wiggle like crazy and dismount again the flames and everything and you still see a bit where the tail goes in. It will not focus there, there's too much other stuff there. But it's the best I could manage and at the end of it you won't notice it that much. Here, it's this space which you can see, which I think was still supposed to go inside, but I can't get it more into it. So, let's Last step before this beauty is completed, we need to give her her bow and her long sword. So, taking a look at her bow, 
We have a snake mouth here, we have some real string, a very beautiful gradation from purple to red. Some sticks, some stuff where we will stick it into her, or the base, not exactly sure, we will see. We have these three demons with demon horns, their rib cages, their little fingers grabbing around each other, their skulls. This is one heck of a sword ornament. Incredible. Like, look at these mini teeth. I really hope to not break anything of it. And then we have a, rolled, a golden rib cage going up to the end of her bow. And again, this is a real string. And lastly, that's her long sword with some spiky ends. Again, here's the pack where we need to stick it onto her. And it's wide and it's long. We have a golden, not handle, I, don't, I am not exactly sure how this is again called. And the end ornaments of her sword with so many cute details, though this one goes into her hand. I managed to do this. So here, let me show you a closer look. Again, I had to do this off camera because it was so freaking hard to do this. So, as you can see, you're supposed to stick it into her tail here. And you still see the pack a bit. And you have to shove it into her hand. But you have to pray her fingers a bit apart to do this. Anyway, we got it. She's finished. She is finished. I would love to hold her for you guys, but she's so big and heavy and I'm scared to pull any of the packs out, even though they are with magnetics. So we will leave it at that. And I thought I would do it like my last review, where we would talk about the positives of these figures and the negatives. And before we begin, to talk about this, I just wanted to give you some data about this. So I got this figure not from Amiami because obviously she's not in stock there yet. I got her from Favorite GK and it was my first time using them and I'm really really pleased with them because everything was so fast, so nice and I gladly paid everything for her. So we will start with, first off, I got the invoice for her payment on the 27th of September. I paid on this day and three days later I got the notice that it is shipped via international standard shipping and just 12 days later I got her. Like I totally didn't expect her to come to me so fast but she just turned up and there she was and I was super happy and it's amazing. Wow. Just wow. And I had to pay $113 for shipping and $414.99 for the figure itself. Which yes, it's a lot. But on the other hand, for everyone who's from the Europe, I did not pay any custom at all. No other fees were required. So everything that you have to pay for her or for any statue figure from Favorite GK they will take it into their shipping cost, that's why it's so high. But I had to pay nothing else anymore, which I'm super happy, so yay! And honestly, I just wanted her so much that even though this is a hefty price for figure and for shipping, uh, I paid it with a smile. <laughs> so anyway, I can recommend Favorite GK, they are really helpful. They reply to your emails when you ask them about something. They are really communicating with you. So, who is Susuka Golden? Obviously, she's from the Onmyoji Honkaku Gensho RPG game, which I'm totally obsessed with because of their design. And she in herself is a sea monster in Umi Yokai and also the adoptive mother 
of Otaku Maru. Well, not really her, him, his mother. It's just he, she adopted him, adopted him in a way. And she's also the ruler of the Mount Suzuka, which she conducted to build as a heaven for spirits, yokais, and sea monsters. And her actual name is actually not Suzuka Golden. She got this name because of a certain incident, which I would highly recommend you guys to check out her memory score. I will link it down in my description so you can take a look if you're interested. Because even the clothes that she's wearing are human clothes, which she got from Yoko, which she impersonated to experience what family is. So, she got in contact with humans, she learned about humans, and because of that she decided to build Mount Suzuka to build a family for all the other yokais and sea monsters. But her actual name is Rehima, because she comes from under the sea, from the ancient sea, I think. So in her blood lies the ancient sea dragon, blood. She has a sister, which is Senhima. I have not pre-ordered Senhima. Because also I like Senhima's design, I am not so much in love with her hair, it's just the plain white. But um, we will leave this for the end of the video, we are not talking about Suzuka, and we will start with the positives. And first off, I love, 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 love Suzuka. She's the new masterpiece of my collection, of my whole collection, not only Omnioji but all my others. I'm so in love with her and I don't even know where to start with her. So everything is perfect. When you start from the resin base with these resin flames up her feet in her pose, how it's sculpted over her hakama, if it's called hakama, to her armor, her shirt, her hands, her flowing hair, her amazing weapons, be it the quiver, the sword, the long sword, or her bow. Everything is immaculate and obviously her face. I love her face. You will not believe how many pictures I did of just her face because I'm so in love with it. And of course on top of it you have her little head with the, I would like to call them antlers, but I think they are horns. They are dragon horns. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. So I just love her to death. Because I did so much footage, I just want to highlight some of the things that I love even more. And one of it would be her tail. Her dragon tail is amazing. Every scale is sculptured individually. We have on top the flowing hair from the dragon, which is all sharp. All of the different strands have some have some smaller strands in them or some indents into it sculpted which is absolutely amazing they all flow in different directions and they are done until her fin which has some clear plastic in it and, and, and some sharp notch, notches really fantastic job it's magnificent how they have done this and the best part actually of it is not only are these scale really snake-like if you touch them, but the underside of her tail has not these round scales that she has on the top of her tail, but underneath are the elongated scale, which is totally typical for snakes, because that's how they move, and they even managed to do the transition between the round scales and the square scales, which you would also see on a snake if you turn her around. So I love this accuracy here and the way they have done it because I did not notice it when I looked at her prototype. Just amazing. Highly love this detail. The next really amazing detail is her armor plates that are flowing over the hakama because if you touch it you will realize that all of these are sculpted features which are representing really the way that the armor pieces are done back in the day. I think it's just folded paper that they have stitched onto half or leather maybe? I'm not exactly sure. I'm not 100% sure how they are doing it. 
but it's a nice texture, it looks really amazing up close and the way they have done the flowiness of it is also really amazing. Her waistband is done stunningly. We have these gold elements in between, which I like. Also her quiver is done spectacularly with all these golden accents throughout her figure. And of course I love her chest area, her bust side. They have done such a good job in sculpting and really showing all the details, all the depths, the way they are flowing, everything. I really like this. It, it's really stunning. And of course I absolutely adore her face. The eyes are fantastic. They have these kind of doll-like features in the sense that they have graved the eyes into her head and they are not decals painted on them but they have really depth in them and they put in glossy finish or kind of like a see-through pearl above it. I, I'm not exactly sure what it's called which makes when you turn the figure up or down or left and right that she kind of follows you with her eyes. It's not that noticeable when you go from left to right but more so when you go from when you look at her from above or below her face, then you can really see this effect. Or at least I think that's where it comes the most out of it. And it's absolutely not creepy, it's totally beautiful. And I love it. It's amazing. The golden antlers and all the small details that they have managed to sculpt all her belts and the smaller fine details like her necklace the headband and all these small stuff is really really amazing. I love the gradient shading that they have chosen throughout her whole outfit from her hakama to her hair. They have done a really good job on it. It's magnificent and breathtaking. All these details just make me fall in love with her and, and even though I would like to say there are no faults or negativities about this figure I have to mention just a few little issues which are not so much an issue for me. And the first one would be that one of her antlers or horns had broken off from the head, but luckily because it was still connected to the cord, it hasn't fallen off. So I could easily glue it back in and you don't see anything. It's secure and I'm happy with it and that's fine. Next, some of her hairs have sadly some scrubs. I tried to film it, no idea if I can really show you. It's essentially at the tips of her hair, which kind of sucks. And I have no idea if I should just fix it with red color, but I think I would really just mess it up more. There are also some minor scruffs, uh, some minor paint bubbles and imperfections, but otherwise we have no paint bleed. Most of the lines were matched perfectly and it's an overall clean job and we also have some knot connections between the ropes and her arm armor which kind of sucks and i didn't see initially but there's just a slight gap and one of her hands and i have to mention that although we have really beautiful color gradient, we have nearly no shadow painting, just a bit the tips of her hands, a bit on her ears and stuff like this, but overall there's no shading and it comes really out, especially on her scales, on her tail where the silver or this pearlescent white finish on her tail, there's no shading at all, which kind of sucks, because it in the end feels flat. I still wish they would have given her some kind of blush or a bit more shading into her face. At the end of it, I don't really mind it that much. So another thing that I really hated and which you will have probably seen while I was trying to build her up is nothing really fitted all too well. Her resin flames were rather loosely. I wish I could have added blue tag or had some blue tag to make them more secure because they are just rattling. Then she doesn't fit all too nicely on her base, even though there's a magnet. 
the way to put in the sword into her hand. I had to pray her hand open again. Reminds me totally of Miketsu's assembly, which wasn't such a good fit either. I hope I will never disassemble her and put her together again. But I think if I ever move, I will have to do this. But I'm dreading it because it was such a struggle. I thought I would break her. I had to remove her from the base two or three times. And I hated every single time because I always felt like I will not break her tech off or stuff like this. Ah, oh, yeah. So anyway, I hope everything will stay, but it was not the easiest assemble in the world. And I wish they would have done this differently. But anyway, on to the last part, which I have my grapes about. It's her size. She's supposed to be a one four scale, but if you compare her to a one fourth by freeing, she can't keep up with it. She's way smaller, even through her whole breadth is very tall, so she's not fitting into a detour, just for your information. Um, she keeps up with the size, but her overall figure seems to be smaller, more like on the one fifth size or one 4.5 size. So she's not a complete one fourth which kind of sucks because I was expecting the size like Elizabeth Bunny, but she's way smaller, like really way smaller. And this kind of sucks, which is the only big gripe I really have with her because otherwise she's perfect. Let's be honest here, no need to complain. Just the size, I was really expecting something bigger. So either she's in real life just one meter 45 or this is not really one for scale. Yeah, and that would be everything. I have nothing else. Oh yeah, maybe maybe one point. A bit of her hair, scalp-wise, they could have done a bit better. Some of the strands, you clearly see where they have uh, stuck them onto her hair, where they have glued them, and they could have made this a bit better. But otherwise, it's just nitpicking. So overall, I would give my Suzuka Queen 9 out of 10 points because of these minor flaws, the few breaks and blemish, blemishes and the few blemishes of her um, paint, like paint bubbles, the scraps and so on, and that she has no real shading or not a lot of shading, but otherwise she is spectacular. I can highly recommend her. I'm really inclined to get her sister but on the other hand as I see that she has not much shading going on. Um, I'm not so sure how I would feel about St. Nina's hair which is just a pure white because there's no gradient in it like for Suzuka but otherwise I think the prototype and the actual figure are nearly the same. They are amazing. I'm really, really content right now with this figure, which led me to a surprising conclusion that I right now have no need to pre-order anything else. She gives, she gives me such a conclusion that I can't really describe it. It's like I obtained what I wanted to obtain. I have reached my peak. I don't need anything else anymore. Obviously, I still have my pre-orders left, which will come in in the months and so, but I right now have no need to further pre-order anything because she's just so fulfilling and I never had this before about another figure and I just love her. I'm happy that she's here. I'm over the moon. I don't know what else to say. I'm so happy with her. Before I forget, <laughs> she also comes with some extras. And one of it is this tin badge, which was not mentioned in her description. This tin badge is absolutely stunning. I love it. It's just Onyoji Art is the best. Which was mentioned is her big, big, her big screen in the background, which I filmed her in. Looks stunning. And also a card with a card display, which is this one which is also super stunning. I love the coils up here and the big belts and the way the stand is conducted or 
the way this stand is designed is stunning. The card is overwhelmingly adorable. It surpasses the original art, which she's based on. And yeah, maybe she has not such big breasts as on this picture, but anyway, it's still amazing. I'm super happy with her, and I would highly recommend that for everyone to get. If you have the money, because she's not cheap. It makes me really regret that she's not really a 1-4. But she's big. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this on but I hope it wasn't too long and I will catch you in the next one. I wish you a great day. Thank you for watching. Maybe comment, like and subscribe. Tell me what you think about her. Will you get Senhima or will you not get Senhima? Anyway, I'm happy. Thank you. I'm out of here. Until next time. Bye bye.